this is, as this is all going on with Microsoft, many Twitter accounts were compromised today, being that we're shooting on a Wednesday. Is this, was, was today the single largest account compromisation on, on Twitter in a, in a day? I don't recall. Well, I don't know the stats on that, Jack. I don't recall any other day like this where, where Twitter blew up. So the question becomes, which staff member at Twitter got canned <laughs> oh, so and they left their account open? Because here's the thing. Today, so we're shooting on Wednesday. Yes. The 15th, you said, of July? 15th of I've July. I've lost all track. I've yeah. given up on time. <laughs> <laughs> and in this one day, Apple. Their Twitter account. Elon Musk. Oh. Bloomberg. What? Cash App? Yeah. Jeff Bezos. Maybe you've heard of him. I think, is that, is that the guy that runs that big company? Oh, yeah. I can't remember the Amazon. name. Amazon. Amazon. Oh, yeah. Amazon. Wow. Right. Heard of them. Bill Gates. Gates has it. What? Bill Gates. Uber. Tron. Justin Sun. Bitcoin. Bitcoin got hacked. Oh. Ah, oh, that one hurts. Not Bitcoin, but Bitcoin's Twitter account. Coinbase. Yeah, that's what I mean. Coinbase. And the list goes on and on. And then gets into political figures such as Joe Biden. <laughs> okay. And are you ready for this? Barack Obama. Oh, Obama got it. Got act. So yes, some of you may be noticing a trend. However, here's the thing. The, the particular hack posted on all of these accounts pretty much simultaneously, like within minutes of one another. Really? A pretty traditional cryptocurrency um, scam. So basically, huh. so Elon Musk's Twitter account said, send, I'm feeling generous, so for the next 30 minutes, send me $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, and I will send you back $2,000 worth of Bitcoin. Bill Gates's Twitter account tweeted, Send me one thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, and I will tweet you, and I will send you back one, uh, two thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. But here's the thing, Jeff. Bitcoin's Twitter said, "Yes, send me one thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, and I will send you two thousand dollars of Bitcoin." So, do you see how we need to think about things before we automatically trust them? Well, I was, this was my thing. Like, if I saw that, my first thought would be, this isn't legit. Yes. However, Elon, we know, banks cryptocurrency. Yes. Bitcoin, we know, has access to insurmountable <laughs> amount of Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. So why, why not? And then there are others who are saying, oh, click this link. We're going to... Uh, contribute to um, medical science through Bitcoin and so on and so forth. So there, this was a massive attack. Yeah, a massive attack. We don't currently, at least as as of the time that we're shooting this, know who is responsible or or some would say why. The question becomes why. Well, clearly they want Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> but would anyone fall for it, Jeff? Would anyone? Well, unfortunately, yes. The interesting thing about Bitcoin is you can not track the transactions. However, right. you can see that the transactions occurred. That's right. And so when Bill Gates tweeted, send me $1,000 worth of Bitcoin and I will send you $2,000 worth of Bitcoin back. Mm -hmm. In the first five minutes. Oh, no. fifty. Thousand dollars oh. worth of Bitcoin were sent to that Bitcoin address in five minutes. Very difficult math here. Ten thousand dollars per minute, and you're not getting it back. Like you no, can't recover that. You can't recover it. It can't be traced. You can't even prove it because Bitcoin is secure. It's part of the cryptocurrency blockchain. Oh, that just hurts to hear. Yeah. So let's have a moment of silence for those who fell for this scam. But 
this really comes That was down. a really quick moment of silence. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's have a uh, let's move you on. Know, so. Let's move on. You're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> you fell for it again, you fool. Oh, God. We've told on. you. We've warned you. None of our viewers fell for it, Jeff. I, you know what? If you did, please comment and let us know. And, and, and why? I sure hope not. Why would you click that? Why? Oh, dear. This, you know what? Can you just indulge me? Can we get a double face palm? Ugh. I can't help but smile, Jeff. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta look serious, but I can't help but smirk. Uh, and that was just Bill Gates again. What about the other accounts? Do we have stats on that yet? Or uh, There are stats. I mean, you can uh. look at the Bitcoin addresses that they posted. Now, last I checked, Twitter was privy to the fact that this was occurring. Right. And they said they were investigating. And in fact, they were locking down the ability for some accounts to tweet. Okay. So they're on top of it. Probably by the time this goes live, we're going to know more. But at the point of where we are right now, sitting in our studio recording, it's happening in real time right now. So here's the question that is running through my head. Mm. Is this a security breach on Twitter? Or is this a security breach on the devices that run those Twitter accounts? Because the fact that they were all fairly simultaneous within minutes of one another makes me wonder, was it an, uh, an attack in, in the Twitter mm -hmm. infrastructure? This is why I joke. What staff member at Twitter got fired? Uh, yeah. Right? But Who, if it wasn't, then it becomes a matter of... Well, what? the dark web. Well, yeah. But what's out there that what's for all, sale? all of these accounts at the same time? It means that either there was a, 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 some sort of smart entity that was logged into all of these at the same time and went, okay, go. Mm -hmm. uh, or was it a, you know, your typical email thing? You click the link and suddenly you're infected. Was it something like that where it just kind of went... That all of these... Yeah, is there a connection between... Verified them? folks fell for? Yeah. Phishing scams... Spear phishing scams are on the rise right now. And the so fact bad. is that during COVID-19, I mean, hey, you might be work from home, but so are the hackers. Is there the possibility, uh, again, this is just kind of starting to think outside the box, but could there be a relation to uh, like a, an unrelated service where there's some sort of uh, phishing program that's collecting information where all of them are using it? Um, like I know we covered in the news a couple of weeks ago about Discord, that there's bots on the rise. Uh, or could it be, like, I'm just trying to think of something, because I mean, a lot of those are tech-based. We can speculate, Jeff. We don't know. At least yeah. at the time of filming, yeah. we don't know. Yeah, there's absolutely a possibility of, like, I think spear phishing is a very real possibility. Mm -hmm. um, somebody wow. compromising phones and uh, who knows? Would, would 2FA fix this? I don't know, but here's what our crypto correspondent, Robert Koenig, says. Oh, yeah. And Go he ahead. posted this privately to us. Yes. And this may be what you're, what's kind of triggering this thought process for you. He posted this in our staff channel on our Discord and says... I haven't read it yet. He, well, here, here you go, Jeff, because this is going to be deja vu when you go home later and you read this. Okay, fair enough. Robert Koenig is our crypto correspondent from the newsroom, and he says, uh, from... from uh, uh, the crypto corner says those scams are really clever. Okay. Absolutely. They even know how to place ads on YouTube. What? And that's true and scary because yeah, I I've seen it where wow. some malicious ads trick people into clicking and providing their details. Wow. Um, okay. So here's the thing that Robert, stresses. He says on GitHub, on YouTube, Twitter, two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication is an absolute must these days. Okay. However, he warns, do not rely on your cell phone because... As in like the number or the device? The phone number. So SM okay. SMS as 2FA. Don't, oh, okay. don't rely on your SMS as 2FA because your phone number can be hacked quite easily. Oh, yes. A SIM swap can occur quite easily. Yep. 
And that's some food for thought. Because mm. if you're relying on your phone's phone number, that can be hacked. That can be obtained and used by someone else. So for anybody who's watching that's going, I, I've just lost $1,000 in Bitcoin. I'm sorry for your loss. Hey, uh, you said that so straight face. That was, that was good. <laughs> uh, if, if they're going, okay, so I don't want to use my cell phone number for two-factor authentication. What other options are available for them for 2FA? The Google Authenticator app. I mean, there's other yeah. authenticator apps. There are tokens that you can purchase. Okay. Uh, you can get them off Amazon. I mean, you can get uh, physical hardware keys yeah. that have a, a token that, yeah, that do um, look for things like single-use passwords. And, and it, it's easy enough. I mean, Google Authenticator works pretty well, mm -hmm. um, and and you just don't want to uh, you don't want to lose your phone because right. that causes a problem. Yes, if you lose your, you can use your phone as the authentication device. But Robert is very specific in his phrasing when he says, "Don't use your phone number right. as the two FA." Right, and that absolutely makes sense. Mm. Absolutely, Google Authenticator, on the other hand, and I say that because that's a, a very common one. There are other authenticator apps or single-use password, one-time password, OTP apps available. Uh, but they generate a password and they refresh every 15 seconds or something like that. So it, it makes sure that that one-time password is only available for 15 seconds. Yeah. So if you don't have your phone, you're not getting in. Yeah. And you really do need multi-factor authentication on every service these days. Oh, period. Oh, absolutely. Period. Yep. And it really does. It's not the perfect solution. It's not. You don't be complacent, but realize that if you don't have 2FA, you are in a very risky situation mm. these days. Wow. I was a part of a Kingston tweet up, tweet up, I guess they call it, the other day about encryption, 2FA, those kinds of things. And, and one of my comments was, like, if you had a device that had a bunch of data on it and you left it on your car seat and someone stole it, would, one, would you lose any of the data? And two, would they gain access to that data? And the answer to both of those questions should be no. Correct. And that encryption should be authentication enabled. You should have 2FA in order to be able to access the data. So even if they figure out the decryption, they don't have your phone. They don't have your authenticator app. Right. So they can't gain access to that data. That's very, very important these days, folks. Yes. I can't stress that enough.